Hey, hey, I'm Ayuma Michelle and welcome to Let's with Ayuma. This is an online safe space that I started to empower progressive women from all around the world to thrive with purpose. Today, we are going to talk about being single in quarantine and the do's and don'ts. I'm going to share with you what to do and what not to do and also how to repurpose your season of singlehood, you know? So before we get right into it, please subscribe. As I told you ladies, my goal is to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this year because I want these messages to reach as many people as possible and to help us thrive with purpose. Yes, even through this most difficult year or ever for us who have been alive during this time. So please subscribe and let's get going. So as I'd promised before, um, in the, my previous video, I'd said that I actually want to talk about uh, my love and relationships um, and some of my experiences, but then I just didn't want to share about love and relationships without sharing like something solid, something practical, because I'm a very practical person, something practical that you could carry with you and serve you during your season of singlehood, right? So this one is especially dedicated to people who are single, right? Um, and so um, I'm going to share with you 10 ways, 10 things you could actually explore while also at the same time sharing with you what to do and what not to do, some things that you can be very, very careful about. And then also, you know, right in the middle of that, I'm going to share with you some of my experiences with love and relationships, um, some of the things that I did right, some of the things that I did, did not so well. But either way, the whole purpose is that the whole point is that we grow together and we get better out of all of this right cool so the first thing the first thing that i encourage you all if you're single i know this is a very very trying time especially when you're single and especially if you're by yourself there's there's always that desire to you know to just share love to share love and to 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 love is a beautiful feeling it's a beautiful experience and so this is a very trying time. But even before that beautiful love comes through, I encourage you to work on your healing. Please work on your healing. Because if you work on your healing, you'll realize that there are so many things that were yet to be done and that you needed to do so that you can show up as a healed person, you know, in, in, in love or in a relationship. This looks like forgiveness. Have you forgiven? Have you forgiven those in the past who've hurt you? Who've hurt you? Have you let go? Have you, you know, and you know, forgiveness isn't for that person. It is for you. All of the people in your past, the men that that maybe you dated, or were in a relationship with, have you forgiven them? You know, once you let them go, then there will be a space for love in your life. Because forgiveness and forgiveness takes up space in your life, you know. Have you explored therapy? To be honest, I am currently going through um, therapy, and I'm not ashamed about it. Especially the fact that during this pandemic, mental health illnesses have are on the rise. And if you're a creative like me, especially, or a person who's super creative and our minds work in a certain way, our mental health seriously needs to be protected. You know, I'm a creative and also melancholic. So sometimes I really, my mind really goes dark sometimes. So I'm actually going through therapy at the moment, putting the money invested in it so that I can be better, so that I can heal myself, so that I can show up as a healed person. Also, when you, when you do these things, when you work on your healing, you will then make room for love. Love needs space. Imagine if your life is a room, you know, it needs space in your life right but as long as you have not healed and there's unforgiveness and all of this resentment and all of those things those stories you keep rewiring and reprogramming you revisit it keeps taking up space in your life right so let go heal build a beautiful new space for love to come into your life and take space in your life so Remember, you can only give what you have inside. Whatever you have in abundance in your heart and in your life, only from that, from the overflow of that, from the abundance of that can you give. So if you have unforgiveness, you will give that. 
if you haven't forgiven your ex, you will make your next pay for it. So don't make your next pay for your ex, right? Create a beautiful new space. Create so much love and healing and abundance within you so that you can have that to offer, right? The second thing is, please manage your expectations. You know, I, I, I've heard of so many relationships that have, that have broken up and even friendships that have broken up because expectations were not made clear. You need to define what is a relationship. What does a relationship mean to you? And I had a conversation with a friend where uh, I recently had a conversation with a friend where we were discussing expectations and it turned out that whatever we thought were actually meant friendship is completely different to different people, right? So for example, you can have a friend who's a chef, right? A master chef, like an amazing chef. You can have a friend who's maybe a, a homemaker friendship to them even just by their personality and what they do for a living means something completely different for the friend who's a chef chefs really work long hours they get out of work at like 3 a.m or something or 4 a.m and they get go back to work i don't know at what time so for a friend if you are to be a friend to a chef you need to show up for them in a completely different way you need to understand this is their lifestyle you know those of you who don't know much about the lifestyles of chefs, you will realize that divorce rates are on the rise. And for you to be married to a chef, you literally need to immerse yourself into their lives, right? And then for a homemaker, it's more of somebody who builds their lives around a home. So if you're constantly telling this homemaker that you need to be out there doing other things on adventures, you're literally telling them not to be themselves. So anytime you find yourself in a friendship or a relationship where people make you wrong, they make you feel wrong just for being yourself, something, 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 it'll always boil down to an expectation as to what a friendship or what a relationship means. So realize you need to identify these things from the word go. You need to set those expectations right from the beginning. What does a relationship mean? What does love mean? What does loyalty mean? What does commitment mean? If you do not iron those things out right from the get-go, you will end up being in a situation where two people are demanding completely different things from each other, yet calling it something similar. Somebody might be saying, oh, you don't love me. And this other person says, you two don't love me. Yet love means something completely different to these two people. So set those expectations very clearly right from the beginning so that you can know what you're building. Make sure your communication communication is huge. Apart from finances, communication is the second largest things that breaks up marriages and relationships. You need to be proactive with it. You need to iron it no matter how uncomfortable is it, it is. Communicate. It will really go a long way. Be, make sure you're proactive, you're clear and very direct with that communication. So that once you define it, and you communicate it, then you know what animal you're dealing with. You know what human you're dealing with, right? And you also know how to show up. The third thing, the third thing you can work on, um, especially during this season, is create a vision. Create a vision for your relationship. And the reason why I say vision is because vision is long term. Right now, especially when you reach my age, where we are at, I don't know, there's something beautiful about turning 30. I think it's because people are now like, now it is your decisions. You know how to face the decisions that you make. But realize that once you have a vision of your relationship, you know where you're going. You know, there's a story that I once heard about um, um, an airport that once there was a pilot and a, and a woman who bumped into each other at an airport. The pilot knew where he was going. And so he asked this woman, hey, where are you going? And then the woman said, anywhere. But then the pilot laughed and he said, this is an airport. You can literally go anywhere in this world. And without knowing where you're going, then I can't know how to direct you. I am a pilot. I am a driver. And I'm very direct with where I'm going. But if I don't know where you're going, then I can't help you. So imagine this is a woman in a whole big airport with planes that can take you anywhere in the world, she's met a pilot, but she isn't able to communicate to this pilot, this is where I'm going. So the pilot, who's a driver of these big, beautiful machines, cannot even be of help to this person. 
It's the same thing with you and your vision for your relationship, your lifelong relationships, the relationship that's going to take you till the end, the, the beautiful, rich, um, legacy kind of relationship that you want to build in this life. If you do not have a vision of what that is, what that looks like, what the values of that relationships are, you know, what kind of a partner you need, what kind of things you want to achieve and pursue and experience through that relationship. Because remember, life is made up of different experiences. If you don't plan for it, it won't happen. And life happens between plans. Do you have a vision for your relationships? Or are you just jumping into relationships without knowing where you're going, without a plan, right? Remember, this lady could literally have been going to the same, same direction where the pilot is driving. But if she didn't know where she's going, then this pilot wouldn't be of help. And that happens a lot in relationships. You find somebody amazing, then you wonder, why didn't it work? It's because you didn't clearly communicate to this person, this is what I want and this is where I'm going. You know, there are people in this life who do not waste time with people who do not know what they want. I am one of those people and it's been a life, it, it, it's honestly been taking me a long time to finally figure out what I want. Because when you know what you want, it also becomes very clear what you do not want right so don't never even show up for a date or a relationship if you do not have a vision for where you want to go you'll end up wasting your time and you'll end up wasting another beautiful human's time right so where are you going be very clear about where you're going in this life especially with relationships number four this is the one that i have really battled with ladies this is the one i've really battled with but you know what i've made some very very good progress <laughs> right Learn to open up and trust again. I know after a relationship or a friendship has come broken down, you can literally be in that place where you have walls and towers really high up in the sky and you're like, no, I do not want to get hurt again. I do not even want to trust again because not trusting and not opening up becomes a comfort zone. And you see how your mind works. Your mind works to protect you. And so if you're wired your mind with men are, men are like this, men hurt people. If I love again, I'll get hurt again. All of those things. If you've trained your mind, that's why I say healing is very important. If your mind is currently trained when it comes to love and relationships, it's still hung up on your ex and the last experience you had, which wasn't nice. And so your mind is still hung up on these stories of, oh, remember how you got hurt. Remember how you told this person not to hurt you and they still hurt you. Oh, remember how you put in so much. Remember how much money you spent on, on this person for gifts. Remember, you, you know your love language. Maybe you, maybe you seriously invested with your love language on this person and they still ended up breaking your heart. And so you're in this place where you're vulnerable, where you have this beautiful, beautiful, vulnerable heart, but around it you have all of this metal, metallic, all manner of like warfare stuff to protect it because you're like i do not want to get hurt again but i will mm -hmm. tell you something that i've started exploring I've, I've, I've been there for a very very long time the reason in fact i think i have been single for 80 80 percent of my life i'm 32 now and i think i have been single for 80 percent of my entire life because i i realized that i have a very sensitive heart and I realized that when I love, I love at 100%. And when I hurt, I hurt. Like, I really, really go down. And so, and I love deeply. I'm one of those people who love deeply. But, and that's why I think I haven't been talking so much about my love and relationship life. It's because it's, you know, it's those things where it's so sensitive. So I don't, I don't want to... I don't know. It's just one of those sensitive areas, the things that you guard. But I've come to realize that love comes, beautiful love is built with vulnerability. You have to learn to be vulnerable. You can't, you can't build something beautiful and amazing when you're not vulnerable. I do this beautifully at work, you know, because I'm a coach. And when I work with these women, it's very easy to be vulnerable with them and stuff like that. But then the thing is they're women. And for me, I'm attracted to men, you know. And so it becomes very difficult. My guard normally goes way up when it comes to men because I am like, yo, I don't know where this will go and I do not want to get hurt. But guess what? It, 
vulnerability is your strength and it helps you to build an amazing thriving lasting love so please learn to bring down your walls take time to know people because then again that that's another thing that has been um something that because i love deeply there are times when i have deeply connected with men from the get-go like deeply you know for the meaning the first time i have a conversation with a guy we literally speak for four hours you know so and and the next four hours again so and i have this reputation of closing down restaurants because the very first time i have conversations with people i don't know how to have those light conversations i have deep conversations so i give myself time to know people that's something that is a new uh, mechanism that i have set up for myself to help me give myself time to know people and also to just pray about it like my instinct has been so high of late but also sometimes i realize that i've always had that instinct and 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 my instincts always tell me, no, there's something not trustworthy about this person. But then I allow the words that I hear to flood and to mislead me. And then I end up in a place where my heart is broken and I'm like, ah, I should have paid attention to my instincts in the first place. So please just pay attention to the natural mechanisms God has provided for you to actually protect you like your instincts. And also time. Time is there to reveal the character of people. So please give yourself time to know who people are. And then also um, learn to open up and trust. Because sometimes, you know, I might meet people and then I'm like my shields and whatever's are on. And I might push people away, which by the way, I've been doing that quite a lot. But I've been pushing people away because you're like, no, I don't want to hurt, hurt again. But realize love can only be built when you trust somebody and when you open up. So ladies, let's bring down those walls. And the fifth one is avoid bad company and unavoidable unavailable men so here is the thing there's a beautiful analogy that i learned from somewhere and i'll share with you imagine a beautiful slice of cake made by the best chef in the world you know master chef pastry chef in the world it's beautiful it's glossy it's it has those amazing layers but then there are flies all around that cake Will you really go ahead and eat that cake? No. My guess is no. Because no matter how amazing that cake is, at the end of the day, there are flies. And no one knows where all those flies have come from. There are flies around that beautiful cake. That's literally how it looks like when you are a catch. When you are a catch, because you are a catch. If you don't know it, you are a great catch. But then you are entertaining you are entertaining bad company around you and you are entertaining unavailable men. So literally have that visual. You are that amazing work of art, slice of cake made by a master chef. But then you, you are in the company of flies all around you. Bad company looks like friends who are not speaking life to that long-term vision that you had. Myself, I literally had to let go of some friends who were only interested in the ratchet bits of my relationship life. Can you imagine somebody coming and telling you, hey, show me a picture of that guy. And you know very well what that person is looking for. Like somebody is busy being thirsty for somebody that you're interested in. And they're telling you, hey, can I read your WhatsApp messages? Hey, can I see the photo of that guy? That, that is a fly. That is a fly. Another thing is a friend who's only interested in, for example, myself, I am abstinent. I'm abstaining from sex because it's a spiritual practice, but also I am keeping my mind clear, my soul clear, everything clear from not only, not only dishonoring myself and the future relationship that I'm going to build, but also dishonoring God. I take that very seriously. You know, sex to me is a gift and I can't share this gift with every single Tom, Dick and Harry. I want to share it and purpose it for something beautiful that is long term, right? And so because I am practicing abstinence, I once had a friend who could who only wanted to talk about sex and the past sex experiences and all of that stuff, which was actually putting me in a situation of temptation and I was trying to walk away from maybe past relationships or past situations where I did not uphold abstinence, right? So those are flies. 
Another thing that is a fly is this unavailable men, married men who keep pursuing you. And also men who do not want, know what they want. You know, a man who's like, yo, let's just give it time. Yo, let's just see how this thing goes. Yo, let's just kick it and see how this thing goes. Those are flies. Those are people who are actively telling you, I want to waste your time. A man who does not know what he wants, that is a man basically telling you, oh, let's just kick it. Let's see how things go. Yo, you know, I really like you. You know, I'm really feeling you, but I just don't know how this thing. I am like, you don't know. You don't know and you're calling me out on a date. Me, I could be at home with my PJs, with Netflix and my lovely cup of tea. And that would be a greater investment than wasting my time with somebody who does not know where he's going. You know, because I know what I want. But if you do not know where you're going, you're wasting my time, right? Those are unavailable men. An available man that, and I tell you with this world that we are living in, look at those HIV and AIDS statistics. It's married men, newly married couples that are actually, uh, like it's prevalent in these groups of people, that and teens. So there are people who are married who have no business being married. There are people in relationships who have no business being in relationships because they have no idea where they are going. You're in a relationship, but you're still going out on dates. You know, you're married, but you're still going out on dates with other women, with girls. Like seriously, that is clearly an unavailable man and somebody who does not know where he's going. And that's why I say, please take your time to know people because if it reaches a time where this guy, you have not met his friends, you have not met his family. There's something to be said about that, you know? And time is a beautiful storyteller. It always reveals the character of somebody. You even get to know the family. And you, when you get to know the family, you realize, whoa, is this the kind of family that you really want to get into, you know? You really ask yourself such questions. And another beautiful thing you can ask yourself is, when you get to know the character of this man, if you have a son who ends up behaving exactly just like him? Will that be a good thing or a bad thing? Ask yourself that. This person who's currently behaving shifty shift, if you end up having a son with somebody who a son with somebody who behaved exactly like him, will that be a good thing or a, a bad thing? Realize that men recreate more men just like them. You right? So make sure you make a great investment right from the beginning. Because for me, I'm thinking legacy. I want to see this man, the way he behaves, the way he treats women, the way he shows up. I want to see this is a potential of how my son could be behaving one day. Because I am one to raise healed, responsible, godly men who respect women, who lead, who offer great leadership and great values to this world and who change this world for the better. Those are the kind of children I want to bring into this world. So if the kind of man that you pair yourself up with is a fly, you will end up producing flies. And I know it sounds harsh, but I'm just thinking logically about this, right? So avoid bad company, cut them off and avoid un unavailable men, right? So let it go, let it go, let it go if it does not serve you and if it does not serve you your vision let it go um another thing is have you identified you need to identify and write down your standards myself i literally have a piece of paper where i've written my standards and my values what i am looking for in a partner i no longer even just call it husband i'm calling it a purpose partner because I also have something to bring on the table. I'm not just looking for a husband. That's just a title. I'm not looking for a title. You can find a husband anywhere. Even even when you when you leave your door, your, your gate or a door, you can get some you can get somebody who's willing to be a husband because you're a catch. But pairing is also important. Compatibility of your purpose is also very important. Compatibility of your values is so important. But guess what? You can't just do this by randomly assuming that this person values the same thing. You need to be very clear about what you're looking for in a lifelong partner and in this purpose partner. You need to write them down. Write them down. There's something powerful about writing things down because it's like you are committing whatever is in your mind, you're committing it on paper. Even in the Bible, when God was about to reveal the vision and the purpose of people, he always told them, write this down. 
it is very important. It's a very important practice. Write down your standards and your value. For me, I wrote them down. I just took one hour off one time. And this was in the healing process when I was healing from a serious heartbreak and stuff like that. I carried the lessons from that. And I asked myself, this is what I need. You need to be very clear with your deal breakers. Your deal breakers. There's your deal breakers and then there's the ones which is wiggle room. But there's those deal breakers which if this person does not have, does not respect, does not already respect, does not already hold, you can never change a man in a relationship. Never. Somebody, change needs to come from within. So you need to find somebody who already values by himself and independently. He already values what you value. For example, top on my list is a man who has a beautiful, intentional relationship with Jesus Christ as his personal savior. Because that is literally my North Star. That is what guides my life. And if this man does not value that already, even before he meets me, if he does not value that, then we have no business talking. Because I will waste his time and he will waste my time. That's just how it is. You need to find somebody who already values what you value. You can't change somebody. You can't start molding somebody. Somebody builds themselves. Somebody has to, that change and that those values need to come from themselves and it needs to come from within. That, that arsenal needs to come from within. So be very detailed. Be very clear. Know what you're looking for. I know there are people who are single and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I keep searching, I keep searching. First of all, as a woman, you're not supposed to be searching. You're not. You are favor. You are Ez Ezer or Ezer. You are the favor. You're not supposed to be searching. You're the one who's supposed to be found. So you don't look for a man. Because if you end up pursuing a man, guess what? At some point, it is unnatural. And that man is going to be like, but you're the one who followed me. You're the one who was, who was looking for me. No. Yes, you can initiate. You can make this man know that, yes, yeah, I'm kind of interested. But you're not going to be the one who's pursuing. As a woman, you deserve to be pursued. You deserve to be chased. You deserve to be pursued. That is an affirmation I'm speaking into your life. You deserve to be pursued. Never chase a man. That is not your job, right? So... Write down what these things are so that as you meet people, you are looking at the values. You are looking, you have your own standards, right? Just the way a Toyota has its own standards, a Mercedes Benz has its own standards. You need to know what car you're driving, right? So that when you go out there, you will start seeing, oh, Mercedes, okay, that's a Mercedes. No, that's a Toyota. No, that's a Mercedes. You need to know what kind of car you're driving. So ladies, what kind of car are you driving? You know, so that you can pair it with the driver, right? Or what plane are you flying so that you can know which pilot to pair yourself with, right? So please, be very clear on what you want. And you, you're not starting to see the, the, the pattern here. The pattern is you. The pattern is not external. The pattern is you. So the, the, the seventh one is positioning. Positioning is key. Now this is where the internal meets the external. Are you limiting yourself because of how you've positioned yourself? Are you misplaced in your location? This is what I mean. Imagine if you're literally living in a city or a neighborhood where primarily it's retired people. What chances really are you going to get? <laughs> what are the chances, chances of you getting uh, maybe to meet or bump into a young single guy? You know, what, what are the chances? Are you passionate about fitness, but then you keep surrounding yourself with people or in places where maybe people who don't take care of their health or fitness constantly are at, you know? If you care about fitness, you will show up in places where people who care about fitness are. If you care about family, you will tend to show up in places where people who care about family are. If you care about faith, you will show up in people who in places where people who care about faith are this is why compatibility and faith is and and uh, compatibility and um, and pairing and knowing what you want is really really important right if you if if show up in places where it's likely that people who care about the same things will show up 
that is literally your positioning yourself remember you are not pursuing men you're not going to be like oh i am going to this event about networking because i am looking for a man no you're going to that event because you're showing up in places where people who value what you value are people who care about business people who care about investment people who care about networking and building each other because that is something that you value so it's likely you'll probably meet somebody who values the same thing in such a place if you care about fitness go to the gym go for hikes go for whatever and do it in groups and you will find people who care about the same thing right because you don't want to suddenly be in a relationship with somebody and then you're forcing them to start working out to lose weight and stuff like that and this person is like yo you met me when I was never going to the gym. You met me when I loved eating and taking my, my, my wine and all this stuff. Why all of a sudden are you setting an expectation? An, 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 uh, an expectation on me to be fit like you, yet we never had this in common in the first place. You see how all of these things are intertwined, right? So remember positioning and for me you know especially in the in the where i was talking about interracial relationships many people look at me and they wonder why are you why why why, why do you only date white men or oh i don't see you dating a, a man of the soil you know a black man but it's not about i am dating cho i'm choosing somebody because of the color of their skin i think that's that's really backward but then also I realized there are people who have a fetish. There are people who have a fetish for beautiful, you know, beautiful dark skin, chocolate skin. There are people who have a fetish for olive skin. There are people who have a fetish for whatever. That's, those are fetishes. Me, I don't have fetishes. But maybe I do. That's a lie. Maybe I do. Maybe I do and I'm not aware of it. But then this is the thing. What leads me to these relationships is because the, I attract a certain, I attract the values that I care about. I attract and because I attract and I position, I then have the opportunity to say yes to certain types of people. And the many types of people who, the main types of people have been attracting, they just happen to be foreigners. They just happen to be foreigners, if I must be very honest, because culture is very important. What culture did you grow up in? Is it a culture which is heavily patriarchal, which believes that men override everything that women do? I'll have a serious issue with that. Is it a culture where people don't respect God and where there are very weird spiritual things? I'll say no to that. Is it worldview? Do you have a worldview that women are just um, slay queens and that women are just uh, trophies and an addition and a, and a small piece to your success? Of course, I'll say no to that. What are your opinions? What are your opinions about certain things in life? How do you treat people? Do you treat people with respect? You know, what, 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 it, literally there's a time, there's a time you guys, I have been tricked into dates. Like a guy says, Hey, you know, there is, you know, I have this business I'm trying to build and stuff like that. Would you like to come and, you know, just offer me some of your advice? I go, we're having coffee. Turns out it's a date. Imagine a date at a coffee house. Okay, I'm sorry, me, those are my standards. If you want to re first date, you're taking me out on a date and then you're hijacking me and then you're paying. I'm paying for my coffee in a day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've taken myself to better places. So there's somebody needs to step up. So, and then this guy is like, yo, it's a date. I am like, you do not, people, you do, please don't hijack people into dates. Don't trick women into dates. And then this guy had the audacity to tell me, yo, I grew up with my mom in the kitchen and my dad in his in his uh, man cave. This is a born again Christian man, which is why I say the church needs to step up. The church needs to step step up. Getting a wife is not everything. You also need to work on yourself. The church needs to teach men that they also need to work on themselves. A wife is not a maid. A wife is not a cook. A wife is not a laundry machine. A wife is a woman with a purpose a builder of dreams, a builder of legacies, a woman being, has something to bring to the table, you know? So for somebody like that, I literally wrote him off because I was like, he has no chance with me. Because even with me, I believe in equal parenting, a home where both parents raise the children, a home where also my husband is going to read stories and pray with my children. A husband is going to go to the kitchen and cook for his kids. It's his children as well, not just mine. 
So that's what I believe in. So those are some of the things that I've been seeing around and I've just been asking myself, no, this is the wrong positioning. And so even upbringing, which is that thing that I was talking about, somebody who's only, he believes the story that he grew up with of seeing um, his mother in the kitchen and his father in his man cave. And that's literally what he has accepted. This is what marriage is. And, you know, also having tough conversations. Myself, I'm a proud black woman. And I know that no matter the race of the man that I end up marrying and having children with, the world will still consider my children to be black. Right? And remember, women carry culture. Meaning, as a black woman, the culture in that home is seriously going to be influenced with black culture. So I, I normally have these very difficult conversations right from the get-go remember i have a i have a reputation of closing down restaurants because i have the difficult conversations right from the get-go we talk about racism head on we talk about money head on we talk about faith head on we talk about parenting head on remember me i'm building a purpose partnership i'm not building a man cave versus kitchen no that, 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 is not, that is not even a conversation I'm going to in, entertain. You know, we're going to talk about health head on. We're going to talk about education and what we see for our kids head on. Those are serious topics. And the faster and the, the, the earlier you talk about these things and iron them out, then the easier it becomes as you go along. You, it's very tough to have this conversation when you've already slept with somebody when you already like them like you've already fallen for them five dates later or something you know but right from the get-go when you know what this person stands for it's easy to it's easier to say no it's easier to say no especially when you realize oh my gosh no matter how cute this guy is no matter how amazing or successful he is he is not for me it's easier to say no when it's still early right so for me, and even explore online dating, you know, like, are you, are you, because I'm still talking about positioning, are you in a place where you're just like locally, clearly, the people you've been looking for, those values do not exist locally. Those values are not respected locally. So have you tried online dating? And I know there are very strange dating sites out there, but for example, in Kenya, I can literally vouch for this one because I know the founder. The founder is my friend, he's called Ian. He runs Date Me Kenya, which is the, 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 the oldest but also the most um, legit dating site in Kenya. It's called datemekenya.com. Check it out. And it's especially for professionals. Like if you're a professional, a busy professional who is tired of going to bars and restaurants and all of that and you just need quality conversations. I mean, you can even match your dates. You can even share ideas of what your dream date is. You know, it's beautiful. I've been there. I've tried it out. And I, I can actually vouch for it because they've been amazing, amazing results. And these people have great research. And one thing that I remember Ian sharing with me is that he told me there are so many women there, but this is not something that should make you shy away. There are so many women on that site because women are ready for love. They've worked on themselves since childhood. But then unfortunately, men do not know what they want. That's why there are so very few men in that site. But also in general, the data that they've gotten about dating in East Africa is that many men just do not know what they want. But there are men who know what they want. And there are men who've gone and invested in themselves through such sites and they've gotten what they wanted. Right? So realize that there are so many avenues. Maybe the reason why you've worked on yourself, you're healing, you're amazing, your finances, everything is amazing. But maybe the reason why you're still falling back is because you're positioning you're positioning yourself in places where people don't care about what you care about so li ri literally the world is a global village you have a whole global village available to you maybe maybe the man that you of your dreams is all the way in the u.s and you're in kenya or all the way in haiti or all the way somewhere in japan or all the way somewhere in in russia you know or Lagos, somewhere in Lagos, Nigeria. You don't know. But the only way you can do this is by learning, position yourself, explore new things, meet people, explore different things. And out of that, you'll get amazing inspiration and connections with people who care about what you care about. The eighth one is please be bold and proactive. 
I know I talked about being found as a woman and that you are favor. But you see, like what I've talked about with positioning, position yourself in a dating site, an online dating site that is legit with people who care about what you care about. And, the, and, and also, for example, be proactive in terms of please put in some effort. Seriously, put in some effort. Don't just wear a t-shirt and random jeans and then you haven't done your hair or anything to your makeup and you're expecting guys to fall for you. No, men are visual. Like that is a thing. Men are visual. And something that I learned is that by the time um, by the time a man loves you, remember we are also human beings and we are at the end of the days we have a reptilian brain. By the time a man likes you, he, it's already passed through his mind that you are attractive sexually. It's already come through. So you need to think of okay, yo, you haven't done your hair. You haven't done, you haven't put in any effort. You're not going to be attractive. You're not going to come out as attractive. Of course, you're beautiful and amazing just the way you are. But we all know what it looks like when somebody has put a little bit of effort. You also know. You also know. You know when you've put in a little bit of effort. So please realize love is not going to come knock on your door. You need to position yourself in places where people care about you. You need to be seen so that somebody can approach you and pursue you. You've got to put yourself out there. Put yourself out there. So realize, put, set your intentions, let your friends know that you're ready for love. Re remember, you know Prince Harry and Meghan, they, they were set up because of a friend and that friend knew both of them were. They were looking and they were open to love. Let your friends know, especially your married friends, let them know. So that they can also, once, because they know what you value and what you're looking for, they can then be your eyes and ears. That is serious positioning, you know, and especially friends with beautiful marriages that you, you genuinely um, admire. If you have friends who really value this, these things and they are married, meaning they are living out your, 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 your ideal, and they're out there looking for prospects on your behalf. I mean, that's amazing. Let your friends know. Also put yourself out there exploring your passions, doing the things you care about. Also trying new things that spark your interest. You will definitely meet, come across people who, you know, who might take interest in you, but also just put effort. Look good. You know, smell good. And if it's online, you know, put a cute profile and really be vulnerable. Put yourself out there. Write things that you truly care about. Don't, don't worry about people thinking that you're too geeky or you're too whatever. Just put it out there. Because the person who really cares about you will care about the things that you value. Right? Number nine is please do a self-assessment and, and get some kind of mentorship. I've touched on this before, but realize you're the common denominator in your relationships. Whether they failed or succeeded, you are the common denominator. So please take time to analyze who have you been attracting and is that the kind of person that you'd actually desire? Because if it is not, then you need to, you need to work on you because clearly you're attracting something. That is not good. But you've been attracting good things. Be very proactive about what those are. Don't just be blind. Know that, yes, I attracted this amazing quality guy because I worked on me and I know that I know where that's coming from because it's coming from me. But also own the role that you played in the failed relationships. This is looking back for lessons, not looking back for hurt or unforgiveness or pointing this is where he went wrong. But look at the role that you played in the failed relationships. Because if you don't deal with it, you'll end up reciprocating. You'll end up repeating the patterns in future relationships. Find, look at the role that you played and deal with it. Also, stop comparing yourself with other people, especially now online. You're seeing there are many relationships that are failing. Relationships that we thought that were, wow, these are couple goals. Please, whatever people put out on social media is the good side of things. But you don't get to live with the, these people. You don't get to see the reality of what they are dealing with, right? Do not compare yourself with others. If other people got married or are in nice relationships and they have couple goals and they look good, be happy for them because you know that God's best for you is on its way. But on them, at the moment, work on you. 
keep a laser focus on where you're going and you'll avoid these distractions because those distractions could be literally of people who are pretending, people who are unhappy, but because they've literally lied to themselves that we have to keep on putting out stories maybe to get likes or to get sponsorships and stuff like that, the influencers, they, they have to do that. That is a business. And so maybe they hate each other, but they are keeping, they're making it look like they like each other because it's a business. They need to pay their bills. Please don't fall for those games. Don't focus. And in fact, like I shared before, I have literally curated my social media in a way where I am following people who are speaking life to my current journey. If there are people who are making me feel envious, you can always tell off that energy. If you're seeing people who are constantly making you feel envious, if you're feeling that there are people who are putting out content that's making you feel tempted to run away from abstinence and stuff like that, say no to that. You have the power of the clique. You have the power to choose the kind of media and content that speaks life to you and that influences you subliminally or non-subliminally, right? So speak life and then find mentorship. If you have married couples who are building marriages and legacies that you actually admire and that are in alignment with what you desire, please receive mentorship with them, sit down with them, have calls with them and let them speak life. For myself, I am so grateful that I ended up meeting an amazing woman who invited me to her home. We sat down, we ate and she told me her love story because both of us seriously care about family right? And this is a Latino woman. And you see why that matters? It's because she comes from a culture where family is everything. But also she has decided this is a value that she really cares about. And she spoke life. She's now mentoring me, sharing with me that story. I will never forget that story. That is a story that I will continue carrying for the rest of my life because somebody spared time to speak life to my dream, to speak life to my journey and my legacy, my family legacy. Remember, you're the common denominator. So take charge of what you're in charge of, let go of other expectations and change your story. You know, learn, learn from experienced people, but also speak life to your love story and surround people with people, surround yourself with people who speak life to your love story, right? And the last one is please be patient. Please be patient and as, as you wait, please work on your dreams. So maybe you've healed, you've worked on your, your healing, you've worked on your finances, you've worked on, you know, pursuing your passions and your interests, you're currently being mentored, you are, you have, you've put yourself out there, you know, you've done your self-assessment and you've realized, okay, this is, these are the lessons I'm carrying from my, from my past and I'm as beautiful gems and as beautiful building blocks for my future. I've, I'm opening up. I'm learning to open up and trust. I have a clear vision of my relationship and all of this stuff. And I'm, I have managed my expectations. I am only saying yes to people who care about what I, they, what I, who people who already care about what I care about. And I'm positioning myself in various places and I've written down the kind of woman that I am choosing to become and the kind of partner that I desire to build a new legacy with. But still, I am waiting and sometimes I face those very lonely times. I Sometimes I feel frustrated that it's taking so long. It is normal. It is normal to feel that way and that's where I currently am. It is normal. But realize this, you are such great company. Love your own company because a marriage is built by two whole people. If you work on your wholeness, you will realize that you are not anemic you are not like a leech. You are not a parasite in a relationship. Work on being such great company to yourself. Befriend yourself. Take yourself even out on dates. Yes, right now we are on, on, on curfew, lockdown, whatever it may be in your country. But what does you time look like? For myself, I normally read a book. At the moment, I'm, I tell you, I have been reading this book the whole year, but I'm now realizing why it's it's such an important book in my in my life because it literally is an alignment. I've been reading Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, just chapter by chapter, because I like reading a book and allowing myself to marinate on it and allowing it to change me, change my life. And I take some nice tea and I do Netflix and chill with myself because these are things that I need to do as a single woman. You know, I need to be and enjoy my own company. 
because you are enough. And then also invest in yourself, your passions, and learn how to grow. At the moment, I'm learning how to code. It's something really cool that I used to enjoy in childhood, but I think because of the change of our education system, I lost touch with it. But just, I'm, I'm learning new things, exploring new things, reaching out to people. Hey guys, please teach me where can I go to learn how to code. I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in managing my finances better. I'm, I'm investing in... Um, looking at my friendship circle, letting go of the ones that no longer serve you. Remember, they are friends for a reason, they are friends for a season, and they are friends who are lifelong. You know, I am very clear about who those friends are. Assess those people because they are going to influence how you show up even in relationships. Um, investing in my spiritual growth, you know, not only through prayer, fasting, figuring out, building my relationship with my father, who is God. You know, allowing him to speak life to me. Um, and even when I feel lost, I go to Ephesians chapter uh, Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 2 and I speak life because God already tells me who I am. So I go there and I'm like, yes, I'm speaking this over my life. And am I really walking as a child of God, you know? Improve, I'm, I'm working obviously on my finances and my investment. I'm investing in self-care. Look, my nails, clearly look, my skin is glowing. I literally have no foundation on. Literally, I don't have foundation on and I've been working on my skincare, my nails, just my mental health. My nails are all sparkly today, you know, looking up nice even though I'm indoors. My toenails are literally yellow because they're reminding me to just always choose joy. You know, what does self-care look like? I bought some nice um, herbal teas um, by Kericho Gold. They have a beautiful assortment because there's something beautiful about eating drinking something that just smells like fruit i'm taking care of my natural hair you ladies already saw how my natural hair looks like and right now because i'm on a growth and health journey i'm tucking it in so that i can grow you know our natural hair for black women it grows when you don't disturb it so i'm taking care of me i'm taking time off to sleep to nap and not feel guilty for taking a break you know and i'm just having fun i'm teaching myself how to have fun have fun being you. Even when I'm married, I'm so sure I will be, I'll make sure that I'll be taking myself on me holidays. I'll be taking myself out to spas because you are the person you will live the longest with in this life. You are with yourself constantly all the time. And if you're not intentional about building a relationship with yourself, loving yourself, dating yourself, spoiling yourself, growing yourself, there's no one else who's going to do that for you. No matter how much you demand that from other people, you are the one who sets the standard. So if you love yourself and you set the standards for yourself, you will not keep demanding that from other people. I know there are relationships that have failed because people are expecting that from other people. That is anemic. Work on you. Love you so deliciously. Make your life and your singlehood so juicy. That people will want to be part of it. That somebody will be like, oh, I want to be part of that. Kick, kick away those flies. Those people who, the, the, the people who are unavailable, the unavailable men and the friends who are just, you know, distractions. And be that perfect slice of cake. A work of art that doesn't have any flies. Make your life so juicy that anyone who sees it will want to be part of it. Because that's what singlehood is. Make it beautiful for you first. That is my greatest of advice. As you can see, most of this advice, it was less about the external, but it was more about the internal. It is all about you, my dear. You matter. You are worth it. And singlehood can be repurposed for a delicious and juicy life if you choose to make it so. So will you make your singlehood? Will you choose to make your season of singlehood during quarantine a delicious one, a juicy one, a flavorful, spicy one? That is all up to you, my dear, and you are worth it. So realize that your best bet is you. You are worth it. Yeah, and that's all for today. That's all for today. Um, I hope you found this to be inspiring, to be um, challenging, to also be something. I've given you some goods that are um, you can work on. Remember, you can check out my friend's uh, um, dating site. He's called Ian. He runs uh, Date Me Kenya, which is the oldest 
and the most efficient dating site in Kenya and in East Africa, if I must be honest. Um, if you want to explore something new, just go in there and check it out. But also realize that the best bet is on you. Um, these, 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 these things are not only what I've been practicing in my life, but also what a beautiful feedback that came out, beautiful lessons that came out from um, uh, a workshop, uh, a meetup, an online meetup that I, I facilitated early in June. And the ladies who were part of it were really excited about it. And if you'd like to work on your singlehood, please check out my, 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 my email below, booking at letsfindyourstory.com. And we can work on your feminine leadership journey with regards to your love story. I work on such topics with people. I've worked on friendships. I've worked on family. I've worked on marriages. It's all about your story and your personal feminine leadership and how you as a woman choose to show up. So please, um, if you want to work with me, if you want me to support you, check out booking at letsfindyourstory.com right on this description box below. And also just comment below, what have you learned today that you would like to share? I mean, that you'd like to try out during this quarantine season um, in your singlehood season. Please comment below and let me know. So remember to like, comment and subscribe. This is Let's With A Yuma, where I'm empowering progressive women from all around the world to thrive with purpose. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.